Hello there, a very good evening and a very warm welcome to Rupa Vahini News covering the truth locally and internationally. I'm Malsha Dharmavadana. Hello there, good evening and a warm welcome indeed. I'm Inrajai Surya. We start off with a look at the headlines for tonight. The president begins his state tour of Germany. The Prime Minister says steps have been taken to make Parliament a government. Minister Spidhis Anaga reveals an untold secret on the former president. Former President Mahindra Rajapaksha makes two divergent statements on the handing over of the SLFP chairmanship. Four more Buddhist monks demanded for their unruly behaviour at the Homagama court premises. Circular adding 2,500 rupees to the basic salary is to be issued next week. 14 people killed in an attack at a Syrian hospital. Four Navy rugby players face a match ban. On to those and other stories in detail now, starting with local stories. President Maitri Palasiri Sena has left the island for Germany today on a three-day state tour. The aim is to promote economic and trade cooperation between the two countries. The President and the Sri Lankan delegation left the island on Qatar Airway flight QR655. They arrived at the Berlin International Airport at around 7.05 p.m. today. President Maitri Palasiri Sena began his official tour of Germany on an invitation extended by Chancellor Angela Merkel. This was the first visit of Sri Lanka heads of state to Germany after 15 years. The Sri Lankan delegation headed by President was greeted at the airport by top-level officials including Sri Lankan ambassador in Germany Karunathilaka Amunugama. A special ceremony was held to welcome the President. This visit will help to strengthen relationship between Sri Lanka and Germany. If you look at that, our historical relations, Germany and Sri Lanka, we have that, you know, 200 of years of uh, good uninterrupted relations. However, uh, due to whatever the reasons that, you know, to these relations, we have not made use of these relations for the benefit of the Sri Lanka, you know, politically, or economically, or otherwise uh, culturally. So, visit of uh, His Excellency President uh, tomorrow to Berlin would open a new chapter of relations between our two countries. In, uh, it will not only help in politically strengthen our two relations, but also economically that will open uh, more opportunities for Sri Lankan businessmen as well as German business community to invest in Sri Lanka. The Sri Lanka Embassy, with the support of the uh, German Foreign Ministry, Federal Foreign Ministry, and of course that, you know, guided by the, our Honorable Foreign Minister of Sri Lanka, we have arranged an uh, extensive program for the visit uh, incorporating political meetings with the three most important personalities in Germany, Federal President Angela Merkel, the Chancellor, as well as President of the Bundestag for this program. So the President also meeting uh, Sri Lankan business community as well as uh, German business community. Foreign Ministry would be very fortuitous at this moment when we are talking of aggressive export diversification as a way forward. And as a result, investments coming to Sri Lanka, Germany has always been a very strong uh, friendly nation, helping us at all given time. And let us take this opportunity to increase the bondage that has been there, economically and otherwise, and ensure the investment trend is brought back to Sri Lanka, like the good old days, and ensure that quality investments will basically have a quality uh, manufacturing place in Sri Lanka. We'll also be looking forward to the German support in the Labour GSP because this will be a very useful tool for our exporters for fighting a double uh, battle. One is increased costs that are there in Sri Lanka going to inherited high infrastructure costs. And the second one is the turbulency that is there in the world currencies. Both put together would make our Sri Lankan exporters much more resilient and able to showcase that we can, together we can make a difference.
In other local stories, Prime Minister Rani Vikramasinghe reveals that measures have already been taken to make the whole parliament a government. He made this disclosure when he addressed the inauguration ceremony of the workshop being conducted for parliamentarians on the maintenance of functions of oversight committees. The three-day workshop was inaugurated at the parliamentary complex in Sri Jawad and Prakote with the participation of several members of parliament. A British parliamentary delegation is also attending the workshop under the leadership of Fiona McTigart, who with the view of exchanging experiences of British parliamentary tradition among local parliamentarians. The oversight committees are entrusted with the task of monitoring the handling of state finances. Parliament what? Delivering the keynote address at the workshop, Prime Minister Ranil Vikramasinghe said that it is highly unsuitable discarding a section of MPs after handing over responsibilities for a certain section of parliamentarians. The system should be scrapped and parliament would be made as a main centre. An independent parliamentary budget office is to be established to assist the state financial committee, COPE, and the government's accounts committee functioning under the oversight committees. I do believe that we've developed a committee system within the United Kingdom which enables members of parliament who are not in government to play a practical role in delivering better governance for the people of our country. We are all elected to represent a constituency and the confidence of the people in democracy depends on their trust in parliamentarians to articulate their concerns and to hold to account the delivery, those who are delivering the services which they expect from government. And that means that we have to have effective checks, we have to find out exactly how uh, well, things are running. The 8th Parliament of Sri Lanka we commence on the 1st of September and since then we have been taking various steps to further strengthen democracy. We started with the live broadcast of the parliamentary proceedings. We have been successful in implementing the proposal for independent commissions and these independent commissions are functioning smoothly. Some are at the infant stage. They need the uh, support but definitely we are all happy the parliament is happy the country is happy that things are moving uh, in the right direction with regard to the independent commission and today we are taking a further step to uh, further strengthen democracy that is in that the implementation of the uh, oversight committees is something new to Sri Lanka and also something new to this part of Asia there are very few countries which are sort of conducting these exercises and we are as one of the oldest democracies in the region we are very happy and we are proud that we have been able to uh, implement this in uh, Sri Lankan Parliament. So the Oversight Committee will be, fine, will be performing a very wide range of functions uh, commencing from policy extending to implementation and in particular the supervision of the financial expenditure to ensure that uh, money allocated has in fact been spent on a particular project or proposal. After the enactment of the 19th Amendment, independent commissions have been appointed by the Constitutional Council, which will also add immensely to the integrity of public expenditure. These commissions are now appointed by the Constitutional Council, independent bodies not functioning under the uh, dictates of an authoritarian executive. Amongst these are the Bribery and Corruption Commission, the Audit Commission, the National Procurement Commission, and so on. These independent institutions will undoubtedly in the future bring about some difference in the pattern of governance. Two people's representatives today divulge a secret to media on the handing over of the SLFP chairmanship to present President Maitri Palasiri Sena by former President Mahindra Rajapaksha. These details were not revealed to media up to now.
Minister SPD Sanayaka said that the former president had made a statement yesterday claiming that the chairmanship of the SLFP has been snatched off him by using the executive presidential power. He noted that two new sections added to the constitution by former president Mahindra Rajapaksha to attack former president Chandrika Bandaranaika Kumaratunga had been backfired on him. According to one amendment, if a member of the party becomes the president of the country, then he will be made as the chairman of the SLFP. According to the second inclusion in the constitution, if a member of the parliament who is elected to the post of president and leaving the high post, then he or she will become the pa patron of the party. According to this amendment, President Maitri Palasidisena became the chairman of the SLFP. When he is leaving from the presidency, then he will become the patron of the party. Mrs. Shiranti Rajapaksha and MP Namal Rajapaksha held talks with the president on two serious problems faced by them. An attempt he was made to apprehend both of them at that time. The president said that investigation should be carried out and he will not obstruct it. But he will never allow to apprehend hastily because Mrs. Shiranti Rajapaksha is the wife of former president and Namal Rajapaksha is his son. He is also a member of parliament. At this instance, the former president has met President Maitri Palasirisena hurriedly and signed the resignation letter to step down from the chairmanship of the SLFP. That was the true saga of this incident. The former president has resigned from the chairmanship of the SLFP not because of his love for the country or the party, but because of the problem faced by Namal Rajapaksha and Shiranti Rajapaksha. Former Minister Hemal Gunasekara noted that he was present at the time of typing the letter. A discussion was held at the residence of Minister Mahinda Amaravira on the 12th of the presence of 23 members. The present president visited Minister Mahinda Amaravira's resident and held discussions. After three days, the president has visited the speaker's official residence and met former president Mahinda Rajapaksha and Mrs. Shiranti Rajapaksha in presence of the speaker, MP Namal Rajapaksha and he himself. Then present president left the residence. Former president Mahindra Rajapaksha has asked if the letter to be placed his signature, but there were no way to prepare that letter hurriedly. Thereafter, in another place, the former president had made the request to get the letter for him to sign, but they said that he will be handed over to him on the following day morning. It was signed by the former president and is being handed over to authorities thereafter. <laughs> Minister S.P. Sanaik also expressed his views on the conduct of the local government representatives. He said that there were several Pradeshi Sabhas and urban council members in front line among pressure group. These members have convened a media conference and the chairman of Valalavita Pradeshi Sabha has torn and burned the letter sent by party secretary in front of the journalist. Former President MP Mahindraj Paksha has made divergent views on separate occasions in the recent past. On the 12th of February 2016, former President and MP Mahindraj Paksha said that he went to his village to lead a life of retirement after losing the presidential election on the 8th of January. He handed over his chairmanship of the party despite the advice given to him that it should not be given to any other person but he went to his native village, handing over the leadership of the party. On the 14th of February 2016, he said that some persons of the SLFP were making statements claiming that he has given up the chair and it was donated by him. He noted that he was not, it was not donated, rather, and the position and that it was snatched from him using the executive presidential power. An all-night period chanting ceremony was held at Sri Lanka Rupavahini Cooperation premises yesterday in connection with the 34th anniversary of the co cooperation. The aim was to invoke blessings of the Triple Gem to Rupavahini viewers and all present and past officers of the SLRC. The Venerable Dr. Ittapane Dhammalankara and Venerable Devahandiye Panyasekara Theras delivered sermons. Minister Gayantha Karunathilaka and Deputy Minister Karunaratna Paranavitana were among those attended the Pirit chanting ceremony. <laughs>
An arms giving to members of Mahasangha was conducted this morning. And now we're going for a special segment starting off today, the battle for the White House. Now the political stage is heating up in the United States of America, even though some parts in the Northeast are expecting heavy snow. The ninth battle between the Republican presidential candidates will be remembered as a night when several grown-up men had to be repeatedly called children to get them to stop yelling into microphones about which one of them is a tattletale and a liar. It all fell apart when Ted Cruz suggested Donald Trump is secretly pro-choice. This is our special segment on the U.S. election battle to the White House. Flexibility is a good thing, but it shouldn't, you shouldn't be flexible on core principles. Um, I like Donald. He is an amazing entertainer. But his policies for most of his thank, life... Thank you very much. I appreciate it. For most of his life, his policies have been very, very liberal. For most of his life, he has described himself as very pro-choice and a, as a supporter of partial birth abortion. Right now, today, as a candidate, he supports federal taxpayer funding for Planned Parenthood. I disagree with him on that. That's a you, matter you of principle, and, I, and I'll tell you... You are the single biggest liar. You probably are worse than Jeb Bush. You are the single biggest liar. All right. This guy lied. Let me just tell you. This guy lied about Ben Carson when he took votes away from Ben Carson in Iowa, and he just continued. And today, we had robocalls saying... Donald Trump is not going to run in South Carolina, where I'm leading by a lot. I'm not going to run. Vote, vote for Ted Cruz. This is the same thing he did to Ben Carson. This guy will say anything. Nasty guy. Now I know why he doesn't have one endorsement from any right. of his colleagues. All right, right. John, I, I get Cruz, to respond. Senator pick from the buffet there. He's a nasty guy. I'm well, well, I, I, I will say... Well. I will say it is fairly remarkable to see Donald defending Ben after he called him pathological and compared him to a child molester, both of which were offensive and wrong. But, but let me say more broadly, you notice book. Donald didn't disagree with the substance that he supports taxpayer funding for Planned Parenthood. And Donald has this weird pattern. When you point to his own record, he screams, liar, liar, liar. If you want to go Where did I support watch, it? Where did I support it? Go hey, Ted, watch, where did I support it? If you want it? to go and watch the video, go to our website, hey, Ted, tedcruz.org. Where did you can I support it, it Ted? Out no, of tell Donald's me about a video. own mouth. When we where were did I support it? You supported it when we were battling over defunding Planned Parenthood. You went on That's television a lot and of said nice. Planned Parenthood does wonderful things and we should not defund well, them. Well, it does do wonderful and, things, and, but not as it relates to abortion. So tell they me, what, do are the wonderful things, me. what are the wonderful Excuse things me. it does? There are wonderful things having to do with women's health. You see, you and I disagree when it comes on that. To That's a, a, not John, when it comes to abortion. That's where I John, John, the reason principle matters. The reason principle matters, sadly, was illustrated by the first questions today. The next president is going to appoint one, two, three, four Supreme Court justices. Done. If Donald Trump is president, he will appoint liberals. If Donald Excuse Trump me. is Excuse president, me. your Excuse Second me. Amendment will go away. You. Hold on, before, and, and you know let me tell you. That? Hold on, gentlemen, Ted I'm going to turn this car around. John Roberts. And now it's time to go around Asia in a minute. North Korean soldiers pledged their loyalty to Kim Dynasty ahead of 74th birthday of late leader Kim Jong II. China's exports drop 6.6 percent year on year to 1.14 trillion yuan in January, while imports declined 14.4 percent to 737.5 billion yuan, customers' data showed today. The death toll from an earthquake building collapse in southern Taiwan reaches 114 as officials announced an end to week-long rescue efforts.
China's first Zika patient was discharged after recovery from hospital Sunday morning in Gangxian country, East China's Jiangxi province. Japanese and Russian vice ministers meet in Tokyo for talks in disputed islands North Korea and President Vladimir Putin's upcoming visit. Four Buddhist monks have been remanded till tomorrow for their unruly behavior when Galagodate Janasara Thera was produced before the court and they were remanded following their surrender to Homagama police. These monks were produced before the Homagama court by the police this evening in Akmimana Dayaratna. Itta Kande Sadda Tisabhatra Mulle Panyajoti and Madhurigiriya Punya Saratheras have been remanded by the court and they will be produced before an identification parade tomorrow. Minister Ranjit Mattuma Bandara told in a ceremony in Anuradhapura that relevant circular on the adding of 2,500 rupees to the basic salary will be issued next week. Minister said that government servants should fulfill their duties working more for benefit of people under the present government. They have been given the maximum salary allowance of 10,000 rupees in the history. The curriculum on adding the salary increase of 2,500 to 10,000 rupees will be issued by next week. Yet on local stories, State Minister Lakshmi Abhabe Waldner claims that the Sri Lanka Freedom Party supporters may have to undergo hardship if the party is divided. He noted that the SLFP supporters should come forward to protect the party under the leadership of President Maitri Palasirisena, who is also the chairman of the party. State Minister Lakshmi Abhabe Waldner was speaking at the district convention of the SLFP Youth Front in Hambantura. It was held at the Angurukona Palasa Urban Council Hall yesterday. Minister Mahind Amravira asked as to who is responsible for the downhaul of the stable party and at the first instance Bimal Viravans and his group conducted a fast opposite the UN office in Colombo. The former president visited the scene of the incident and gave king coconut water to Bimal Viravansa and thereafter he ended his fast. This has created a rift between the international organizations and the then government. After some time they were talking about an economic assassin in the government. These persons, three persons of the family rather, were controlling the country and taking commissions of large-scale projects, they said. After making such statements, they have joined the party. Thereafter, the party supporters became frustrated about party activities. State Minister Lakshmi Yabhabi Wadhana noted that persons who were responsible for devastating the foundation of the Sri Lanka Freedom Party took measures to divide it in the recent past. Dinesh Gunwaldana, who is acting like a revolutionist in the party, will face consequences of his actions, he said. No one is there to rescue us if we all fall into an abyss. We had to suffer for several years. If it happens, he said. Meanwhile, addressing a ceremony in Horopatana, Minister Vijitamani Soiza said that they will form a party with former President Mahindra Rajapaksha, even despite statements being made by the present president, to make all our local government representatives winners. Sri Lanka Agriculture Research and Production Assistance Union emphasized the need of implementing the rule of law sternly against persons involved in target attack against female agriculture research officer in Kegal. This board, rather, the board, they brought this matter to the notice of journalists at a media conference held in Colombo today. Representatives of the union told the media conference that agriculture research officer Lata Kumarihami, attached to Yatiantota Agrarian Service Centre, came under thug attack. The reason for the attack was carrying out her duty proper, properly in reclaiming paddy field illegally. She sustained critical injuries in the attack. She was transferred from Marvanala Hospital to Kandy Hospital. She is now receiving treatment at Ragam Hospital. The union urged the government to take necessary measures to ensure the security of the female agriculture research officer in Kegal. Taking a look at the stock update, the all-share price index closed to 6,266.17 points, dropped by 16.83. And the S&P SL20 index closed to 3,256.68 points, dropping by 8.26 at the end of trading in the Colombo Stock Exchange today. Turnover is a 400 million rupees.
Well, that's it from local news. International news is coming up next. Taking a look at foreign news now as two hospitals have been hit in new airstrikes in northern Syria. Medics and witnesses say causing a number of deaths and injuries in Azaz on the Turkish border. At least 10 people four reportedly died, including several in one hospital building. Medicine Sans Frontiers said seven people died and eight are missing after another attack in Marat al-Numan. MSF blamed pro-Syrian government forces with a raid in Marat al-Numan and Turkey blamed Russia for the Azaz strike. A strike comes days after Russia and other world powers agreed to a limited cessation of hostilities in Syria. It has not been confirmed who carried out the latest attack. However, Migo Terzain, president of MSF France, said that Marat al numan strikes were carried out by forces loyal to President Bashar al-Azad. On to some foreign news in brief. Beijing's top representative in Hong Kong has blamed radical separatists from Riots that erupted in Chinese rural city almost a week ago. The worst violence since pro-democracy protests paralyzed parts of Asian Financial Center in 2014. More than 60 people have been arrested in connection with the violence. Rainy skies can't stop hundreds of couples in Taiwan from celebrating Valentine's Day in sending candlelit lanterns floating off into the night during annual lantern festival. Hundreds of couples send their wishes for the upcoming year sailing off into the night sky in the annual lantern festival. Among this year's participant was Taiwanese president. Taking a look at the world of sport, it's cricket as India beats Sri Lanka in the third and final T20 game of the three-match series. Nine wickets yesterday, clinching the series 2-1. India won the toss and invited Sri Lanka to bat first. Sri Lanka was bowled out for 82 runs and scoring the lowest score of a Sri Lankan team in a T20 match. Ravi Chandra and Ashwin claimed four wickets, chasing a victory target of 83 runs. India scored winning run in the 14th over, clinching the series 2-1. It's going to be runs. Good touch. So too is this man. Wow. Two sounds. That's a good hit. Brilliantly. Ashwin Jadija runs. However, controversial decisions of umpires Anil Kumar Chowdhury and CK Nandan on two dismissals of Asela Gunaratna and Sachit to Sinanaika have been highlighted after the final T20 match and organizers have been named on preparing an unfavorable wicket for the T20 game between the two countries. Moving on to rugby, four Sri Lanka Navy rugby players have been banned from playing rugby in future matches for violating discipline in their rugby matches against Army yesterday. Sri Lanka Navy beat Army by 32 points to 30 in match played at Diagama Mahindra Rajapaksha Stadium in Homagama yesterday. Yoshida Rajapaksha was the former captain of the Navy. The four Navy players played the match wearing armbands expressing their solidarity for former captain who is now in remain prison. Media spokesman of Navy Captain Akram Alavi said that Navy commander has directed the relevant divisions to impose a ban on these four players and submit a report following disciplinary inquiry. And before we go with a look at the weather, the main department says that showers will occur at times in the eastern Anua provinces and in the Hamantara district. Several spells of showers will occur in the north central province. Showers or thunder showers will occur at several places in the western central and Sabaragamu provinces and in the Gaul and Mathura and Putlam districts after 4 p.m. There may be temporary localized strong winds during thunder showers. The general public is requested to take adequate precautions to minimize damages caused by lightning.
It is a weather forecast for the next 36 hours. Well, that's it from Rupa Vahini News tonight. More stories tomorrow at the same time. Have yourselves a great weekend. Good night.